What's come out about Sean Connery since his death? Sean Connery was born Sir Sean Connery on August 25, 1930, in the working-class neighborhood of Fountainbridge, Edinburgh, Scotland. Born into humble beginnings, Connery's upbringing was marked by the struggles of poverty, a backdrop that would deeply influence his character and resilience throughout his life. Growing up in a financially strapped environment, Connery quickly learned the value of hard work and perseverance. His family's economic hardships meant that Connery had to take on responsibilities from a young age, instilling in him a strong work ethic and determination to carve out a better future for himself. From his early days as a bodybuilder, where he honed his physical prowess and discipline, to his time as a lifeguard, where he learned the importance of vigilance and quick thinking, Connery's eclectic resume reflected a life marked by adventure and exploration. Yet it was Connery's foray into modeling that would catalyze his entry into the world of acting. His striking good looks and undeniable charisma caught the attention of casting agents, opening the door to opportunities in the burgeoning world of entertainment. However, it was Connery's true passion for the performing arts that would ultimately propel him forward. His early involvement in local theater productions in his hometown of Edinburgh provided him with a platform to showcase his talent and dedication to the craft earning him recognition and praise within the local theater community. As Connery's confidence and skills as a performer continued to grow, so too did his ambition to pursue acting on a professional level. In the late 1950s, he made the bold decision to take his talents to the next level, setting his sights on the bright lights of London's West End. It was here that Connery would embark on his journey as a professional actor seeking out roles and opportunities to further refine his craft and establish himself in the competitive world of show business. Sean Connery's casting as James Bond in the 1962 film Doctor No marked the beginning of an iconic chapter not only in his career but also in the history of cinema. Initially, there was skepticism surrounding Connery's ability to embody the suave and sophisticated secret agent envisioned by author Ian Fleming. However, from the moment he first appeared on screen as 007, Connery effortlessly captured the essence of the character, exuding charm, charisma, and an unmistakable air of confidence that would come to define his portrayal of James Bond. Throughout his tenure as Bond, spanning seven films for several years, Connery cemented his status as the quintessential 007, forever altering the landscape of spy cinema. His portrayal of Bond was groundbreaking in its complexity blending rugged masculinity with refined elegance to create a character that was both captivating and enigmatic. Connery's Bond was more than just a master spy. He was a cultural icon, a symbol of sophistication and coolness that captivated audiences around the world. The Bond films featuring Connery, including From Russia With Love, 1963, Goldfinger, 1964, Thunderball, 1965, You Only Live Twice, 1967, Diamonds Are Forever, 1971, and Never Say Never Again, 1983, are widely regarded as some of the most beloved and influential movies in the spy genre. Each installment showcased Connery's remarkable versatility as an actor, allowing him to navigate a wide range of scenarios with equal parts wit, charm, and action hero bravado. From thrilling car chases and intense fight sequences to steamy romantic encounters and clever espionage tactics, Connery's Bond captivated audiences with his effortless blend of danger and sophistication. Following his tenure as James Bond, Sean Connery faced the formidable challenge of avoiding typecasting and expanding his repertoire as an actor. Determined to prove his versatility beyond the confines of the iconic spy role, Connery embarked on a deliberate path of diversification, seeking out roles that would showcase his range and depth as a performer. His strategic approach to post-Bond career choices not only defied expectations but also solidified his status as one of the most accomplished actors of his generation. One of Connery's most notable post-Bond achievements was his performance in Brian De Palma's The Untouchables, 1987, where he portrayed the seasoned Chicago cop, Jim Malone. In this role, Connery demonstrated his ability to command the screen with a commanding presence and nuanced performance, earning him widespread acclaim and his first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor.
This pivotal role not only reaffirmed Connery's talent but also signaled his successful transition into more diverse and demanding roles. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Connery continued to captivate audiences with a string of memorable performances in a variety of genres. In The Hunt for Red October, 1990, Connery delivered a riveting portrayal of Soviet submarine captain Marco Ramius, showcasing his ability to command attention in high-stakes thrillers. His collaboration with director Steven Spielberg in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, 1989, further showcased his versatility, as he brought depth and gravitas to the role of Indiana Jones' father, Dr. Henry Jones Sr. In Michael Bay's action-packed blockbuster The Rock, 1996, Connery proved that he could still hold his own as an action star, delivering a charismatic performance as a former British intelligence agent. His on-screen chemistry with co-star Nicolas Cage and his ability to inject humor and gravitas into the role elevated the film to new heights of entertainment. Connery's commitment to artistic excellence and his willingness to take on challenging roles continued into the new millennium. In Gus Van Sant's Finding Forrester, 2000, Connery delivered a poignant performance as a reclusive writer mentoring a young prodigy, earning him critical acclaim and further cementing his reputation as a versatile and respected actor. Sean Connery's personal life was as rich and varied as his illustrious career on screen. His romantic journey included two significant marriages, each leaving a lasting impact on his life. In 1962, Connery married Australian actress Diane Silento, marking the beginning of a tumultuous yet deeply significant chapter in his life. The couple's union produced a son, actor Jason Connery, and while their marriage endured for over a decade, it was not without its challenges, ultimately culminating in divorce in 1973. Following his divorce from Salento, Connery found love once again in Micheline Roquebrune, a Moroccan-French painter and philanthropist. The pair tied the knot in 1975 and remained devoted partners until Connery's passing. Their enduring marriage was characterized by mutual respect, love, and shared interests, providing Connery with a stable and supportive foundation in his later years. Beyond his romantic relationships, Connery's commitment to family was evident in his role as a father. His son, Jason Connery, followed in his father's footsteps, carving out a successful career as an actor and director. Despite the demands of his profession, Connery made it a priority to maintain close relationships with his children, instilling in them the same values of hard work, integrity, and perseverance that had guided him throughout his own life. In a moment that reverberated across the globe, the silver screen lost one of its most iconic figures on October 31, 2020. Sean Connery, the legendary actor whose portrayal of James Bond defined a generation, bid farewell at the age of 90 in the Bahamas. Yet, his departure unearthed not just a tale of cinematic prowess, but also one of profound human vulnerability. As whispers of his demise traversed continents, his widow, Micheline, unveiled a poignant truth. Connery, in the twilight of his life, grappled with the harrowing tendrils of dementia, a relentless adversary that silently gnawed at his memories, leaving behind a legacy of both brilliance and fragility. But fate had more in store for the Connery clan, for scarcely seven months later, the sands of time claimed yet another member of the illustrious family. On May 10, 2021, in the mist-shrouded highlands of Scotland, Neil Connery, Sean's younger brother, breathed his last at the age of 83, succumbing to the enigmatic embrace of an undisclosed ailment. Though his name may not have resonated as resoundingly in the annals of cinema, Neil, too, had trod the boards of the silver screen, carving his niche with a handful of roles and a striking resemblance to his elder sibling. His presence, albeit quieter, lent credence to the Connery dynasty, a testament to the enduring allure of their shared lineage. While Sean Connery's legacy is eternally entwined with the suave sophistication of 007, his journey with the iconic role was fraught with twists and turns as dramatic as any Bond escapade. From his electrifying debut in Dr. No to his triumphant return in Never Say Never Again, Connery's portrayal of the debonair spy captivated audiences worldwide, cementing his status as the quintessential Bond. Yet, behind the veneer of glamour, lay a man weary of the trappings of fame, 
a sentiment encapsulated by his poignant departure from the franchise after you only live twice. However, the allure of Bond proved irresistible, beckoning Connery back into the fold with the promise of glittering riches, a temptation he couldn't quite resist. Yet, true to his indomitable spirit, he redirected his newfound wealth towards nurturing the artistic endeavors of his homeland, a gesture as noble as it was emblematic of his unwavering commitment to his roots. After 1967's You Only Live Twice, Connery quit Bond, only to return for 1971's Diamonds Are Forever when the studio offered him a hefty $1.25 million to come back to the role, according to Express. It's not quite perfected yet. Connery later donated his diamonds paycheck to the Scottish International Education Trust, which supports Scottish artists. Connery was briefly succeeded in the role by George Lazenby, who would quit after one film and was later replaced by Roger Moore, another memorable Bond. As the mantle of 007 passed from hand to hand, Connery remained an immutable presence, an irreplaceable cornerstone in the tapestry of cinematic history. Even as Daniel Craig stepped into the hallowed shoes of Bond, filmmakers clamored for Connery's cameo, a testament to his enduring legacy. And though retirement beckoned him into the tranquil embrace of seclusion, the echoes of his Bondian exploits continued to reverberate long after he bid adieu to the silver screen. In a twist of fate as serendipitous as it was poignant, the very artifact that embodied Connery's inaugural foray into the world of espionage found itself thrust into the light. The prop gun wielded by Connery and Dr. No, a relic steeped in nostalgia and intrigue, fetched a princely sum at auction, a testament to the enduring allure of Bond and the indelible mark Connery left upon cinematic history, was sold at auction for $250,000 in California, according to Variety. The owner of the gun found a seller shortly after the actor's passing, but it wasn't Connery's death that led him to give it up for sale. They were already in the process of auctioning off the gun a year before he died. The auction coincidentally happened just two months after Connery's death, which left the previous owner a little uneasy. The name of the new buyer of the Walther PPK prop gun was not revealed but is a fan of all the Bond movies. As we bid farewell to a titan of the silver screen, let us remember Sean Connery not as a mere actor, but as a timeless icon whose legacy will continue to inspire and captivate generations yet unborn. In the hushed whispers of the wind and the timeless echo of his laughter, Sean Connery lives on, a shining beacon of hope in a world ever-changing yet infinitely timeless.